All right, today we are going to be going over my top five hikes in Colorado Springs and the surrounding area. So again, these are not all directly in Colorado Springs. Some of them are a little bit of a drive, but trust me, it is absolutely worth the drive and not to mention the drive there is incredibly beautiful. So let's start off with the first two. These are actually both going to be located in the same park in North Cheyenne Canyon on the southwest side of Colorado Springs. This is definitely my favorite park. I also only live a few minutes from there, so I have a great ease of access to get there. And I still have yet to explore all the trails there. So without further ado, the first trail and arguably one of the most popular hikes in Colorado Springs is going to be Mount Muskoko. Um, that's look again located in North Cheyenne Canyon. This trail is about four miles and about 1300 foot elevation gain. Um, so actually the parking lot is very small. So if you are going to go hiking here, I highly recommend getting there super early because you are going to have to park quite a ways away and you're either going to be walking uphill or downhill one way or another to get to the trailhead. Um, also it's worth noting that there is another trail The tra it forks when you get up to a certain point, the trail forks and Muskoko goes off to the right. And then actually Mount Cutler goes off to the left, which is a much easier hike. You still have some pretty fantastic views from there. Um, but Mount Muskoko is definitely my favorite. It's a good uh, elevation. You know, you're, it's, it's, a, it's not a super long trail, but it's got 1300 foot elevation gain. So you're gonna be going up there pretty rapidly. And at the top, um, it's a little bit more of a scramble which I think is fun. Um, and the views are just absolutely incredible. One of my favorite places in Colorado Springs to enjoy a nice frothy adult beverage and a snack. Um, I always like to say we don't go hiking for hiking. We go hiking to eat food in cool places. So yeah, I would definitely recommend bringing, you know, a little chair if you've got a small enough chair to fit in your pack and a drink or some food or something like that. And then also after you're done, would highly, highly, highly recommend stopping at Cerberus Brewing on the way back for a little post-hike beverage and food. They've got fantastic beers, fantastic food. I, that is arguably one of my favorite restaurants in Colorado Springs. Not to blow their, blow their whistle or anything, but they are awesome. So definitely go recommend checking them out. All right, number two. This is also going to be in North Cheyenne Canyon, and this is Seven Bridges Trail. This is going to be a lot more family friendly trail as a lower elevation gain. It's a little less than a thousand feet. It's still about 3.8 miles of hike. Um, and it's cool because you're kind of hiking along this little creek the whole time. It's called seven bridges because there are seven bridges that you must cross to get to the end. And if you are feeling adventurous, I would highly recommend. And if you've got the time going past the seventh bridge, um, you can hike about three more miles into the trail or into the park, and you're going to come to Loud's Cabin, which is a really, really cool area. It is, there's a huge aspen grove there, and I cannot recommend enough going to see that, uh, like right when the aspens turn in October, early October. Uh, I mean, it's absolutely just spectacular. So Seven Bridges, fantastic. You're feeling spicy. You're feeling, you're feeling that leg that you want to get that leg pump going. Go check out Loud's Cabin. It's definitely going to be worth the extra trek. All right. Uh, number three, and this is actually not in Colorado Springs. It is in Green Mountain Falls, which is about halfway between Colorado Springs and Woodland Park, which is right up Highway 24, right up the hill. Uh, another really beautiful drive. That is arguably one of my favorite little sections of highway in Colorado. Um, but it is called Catamount Falls. And I actually did this just this last weekend, um, and it's January here, so keep that in mind while I'm telling you the story. But we got, let's see, first off, sorry, it's a six and a half mile long trail and about a 2,000 foot elevation gain. So it's a pretty spicy little hike, like definitely on that upper end of moderate for sure. Um, so I went this last weekend and I had uh, my micro spikes, my crampons, my girlfriend didn't. So we got to a section of the trail where the, where the waterfall was and it looked like the waterfall had run over the trail and the trail was completely iced over. I mean, I'm not kidding, two inch thick, two inch thick ice everywhere and it was downhill. 
So the only possible way that you could get down there, actually there's two possible ways. The only possible way to do it successfully was with spikes. Now we thought about sliding down, but there was some sketchy uh, trees and it just didn't really look like a super safe option. So we opted to turn back at that point just because we only had one set of crampons and just operating with one set of spikes was not optimal. But I highly recommend checking out Catamount Falls. Great place to go in the summer. Um, it ends at the South Catamount Reservoir. So if you're a fisherman, you can definitely take your pole up there, you know, catch, catch a few trout. I should emphasize you cannot swim in any of the Catamount Reservoirs as they are a water source for Colorado Springs. So don't swim, don't do it. It looks like it's gonna be a great swim, don't do it. Uh, but yeah, really recommend checking out Catamount Falls Trail. And Green Mountain Falls is cool. There's a cute little town. They've got a nice little bar and a coffee shop if you wanna get a little drink before or after. Um, really cool, really cool hike. Um, all right, and then another family hike that I think is fun. Anytime I have people come in from out of town that have not been acclimated to the elevation here, I like to take them to Garden of the Gods. Obviously, it's a huge tourist attraction, so I would recommend going on a weekday to avoid the traffic um, and just all the people because it's, it does get overwhelming at times, especially like summer weekends. I would avoid it. But um, the Siamese Twins, the Siamese Twins is actually my favorite rock formation in Garden of the Gods. The trail to get there is only about a half mile. I've taken family members. My elderly dog was just fine on this hike. And it's definitely my favorite rock formation. It's a great spot for pictures. It's got these two red rock formations that kind of come like this. And then there's a little bridge. So there's this little hole right in the middle of the rock formation that makes for a great photo. Um, yeah, would highly recommend checking that out. And just check out Garden of the Gods itself. I mean, it's a beautiful place to drive through. A lot of people bike through there. Uh, I mean, there's a bunch of trails to check out. You know, there's paved trails even. So if you're not wanting to, you know, hike on uh, the dirt or maybe step on a rock or something and roll an ankle, I don't know, whatever reason there might be for you wanting to walk on a paved trail, there are those there. All right, and then number five on my list. This is definitely one of my favorite hikes in the greater Colorado, or let's say front range, because it is about an hour away, 45 minutes to an hour from Colorado Springs in a little town of Divide. So you're actually gonna go up Highway 24 and just keep on trucking until you get to Divide. And um, if you can, just get on all trails. I would highly recommend downloading that app if you haven't yet. I will say the accuracy of that app is not there, but the nice thing about it is, is it gives you directions to the trailhead. So if you don't know how to get there, download all trails. This trail is called the Crags. Now the Crags is this massive, beautiful rock formation that you get to at the end of the trail. It's about a five mile trail, but it's only about an 820 foot elevation gain. So it's definitely family friendly. Um, you know, you could take little kids, you know, people that haven't been acclimated to Colorado. Uh, definitely a very, a much easier hike than a lot of other trails around town. Um, and just the end, just getting to the end of that trail. I mean, it's absolutely insane. I mean, the, the trail going along, along it is absolutely incredible. In the summer, there's lots of wildflowers. It's just absolutely beautiful but I cannot emphasize enough how cool it is when you get to the end of that trail. Definitely bring a beer, you know, or a soda, whatever, whatever your little beverage of choice is, you know, find a nice rock and just take it in because it's absolutely breathtaking. It's also a very popular destination for like winter hiking. Um, sometimes the snow does get pretty deep out in Divide. So I would, you know, maybe get on Facebook and see if anybody, go to like uh, Colorado hiking groups and see if anybody's hiked the crags if you're planning on hiking in the winter time because you might actually need snowshoes. Sometimes crampons don't do it and you're gonna need the snowshoes to really keep you in on top of the snow instead of sinking three feet into the snow. So there you have it. Those are my top five hikes in Colorado Springs. And I also do just wanna mention as much as I like making these videos for you guys, what I really love to do is helping you find real estate here in Colorado Springs. Myself and the rest of my team are all licensed realtors and we are experts in the Colorado Springs in greater Colorado Springs area. So if you like this content, if you like hearing about real estate, definitely give us a call, like, subscribe. All of our information is going to be in the description below. And yeah, we'll see you on the next video. Peace.